Dear students, welcome to Statics and Dynamics with me, Dr. Loyal Zubi, and thank you for tuning in to this uh, video. We are starting lecture five, the online lecture, and in this lecture, we are going to continue our discussion about force vectors. In the previous lecture, we learned how to represent a three-dimensional vector in Cartesian coordinate system using the i, j, k, you know, in the x, y, and z axes, and we learned how to find the magnitude and coordinate angles for a three-dimensional vector. Uh, keep in mind that we have two different sets of angles. We have something called projection angles and coordinate angles. And we're going to do multiple exercises and uh, examples about how to find these in our in-person sessions. Also, we learned about what is a unit vector. And uh, we talked about the projection angles and the coordinate direction angles and um, how to uh, calculate them, as I mentioned before. In this video, we are going to introduce another concept called a position vector. Uh, which is different from the force vector, uh, but they are related, they're very important. In order to identify a force vector in three-dimensional space, you need to align that force vector on a position vector uh, in order to find its direction. So we're going to talk about position vectors, what they are, and how to represent a position vector in Cartesian coordinate form, given the geometry. And what we mean by the geometry is that uh, if you know the x, y, z position or the locations of two different points in a space, the tail and the uh, head of the vector, I can represent the position vector using the geometry, which is the location of the starting point and the ending point, or two points along that uh, vector. So we're going to learn about that. That's very important in uh, engineering and also in vector ana and force uh, vector analysis. Finally, we will learn how to represent the force vector directed along a line. I want you to keep in mind that we have two things now. We have a force vector and then uh, that vector, in order for the force to be represented as a vector, it needs a magnitude in the direction. We know, let's say, that magnitude, we'd like to talk about the direction. We use the position vector to identify the direction of uh, the force vector. So keep in mind these two things and we're going to explain what they are and how they're different force vectors and position vectors and how are those two uh, related. Let us uh, start with representing a three-dimensional vector uh, in Cartesian coordinate system and I uh, will talk about the position vector first and how it relates to the force vector. You can see that this in this image you have this ship line uh, connected to the uh, bow. You need to have a representation of the Cartesian vector. So if I have this force here and I have this line, a morning line, how can I say what is the direction of the force. So let's say I, there is 1000 Newton of force, that's a magnitude. I need to find the direction for this force and I know that the force is along the mooring line uh, connected to the bow. So how we can do this? Uh, the key point is the direction. Uh, it's a three-step pr uh, procedure. The bottom line or the end result is identifying the force magnitude and direction and then writing the force into a Cartesian coordinate format. So the force acting along the rope can be represented by Cartesian, by Cartesian vector by establishing the x, y, and z. The first step is to form a position vector called r. So this one here, that's the step one. Assuming that you know the magnitude of the force, let's say I know that I have 1000 Newton, but I don't know the direction. So first thing is to establish r, the position vector along the rope, and we will learn how to do this uh, in a bit. Uh, but to give you a quick hint, you will take the coordinates of the final point or the head uh, and you subtract uh, it from the tail, which is the starting point. And we will talk about this in a bit. After you find R, you need to find the unit vector of R. So we're not talking about F. So find R, then the unit vector of R. And if you remember from the previous lecture, the unit vector is the vector itself, r in Cartesian coordinates, i, j, k, divided by the magnitude of r. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more. Once you find the first step one position vector, step two, once you find your unit vector along the direction of the rope, then you multiply whatever magnitude of force you have, let's say 1000 Newton, with the unit vector, and then you have your f, the vector, complete vector, with magnitude and uh, direction. To recap quickly, you will start with the position vector. We're going to learn how to find that. Then you find the unit vector of the position vector, and then you multiply the unit vector with the magnitude f that you have, and then you will end up with a vector force in a Cartesian coordinate system. So you start with the position vector. 
one, step one. Step two, your unit vector. Step three, you multiply the unit vector with the force, the magnitude of the force, and then you have your force in Cartesian coordinate system. I will stop the video here and I will continue uh, with video two. Uh, so please stay tuned.